Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review the Sculptfun G9, a dual 10 watt diode and 2 watt fiber IR laser engraver. This type of engraver uses a galvanometer, or in simpler terms, two mirrors reflect the laser beam. Unlike traditional laser engravers, you won't see the laser head moving around. The main advantage of this design is speed. You can finish a job in seconds far faster than what traditional engravers can achieve. The 2 watt fiber laser can engrave on almost any material, including metal, plastic, and leather, where a diode laser might struggle. Coupled with a 10 watt diode laser, it can also handle wood. The working area of this machine is 105 by 105 millimeters, and its claim top speed is 5,000 millimeters per second. Both the dual IR and diode laser modules are housed in the top of the machine, equipped with a heatsink and cooling fan. It features a two-dot alignment system, making it easy to adjust the focus by using the buttons on the machine to move the laser head up and down. For batch production, the machine comes with two clamps for easier alignment and a repeat last job button, allowing you to run the same job over and over again. It comes with its own PC software requiring a USB connection, and also includes a mobile app that allows for wireless control. However, the machine doesn't have a display screen, relying instead on a three-color LED light to show whether it's operating in standby mode or working with a specific laser. At the back, you'll find an exhaust fan. You can also get the optional smoke purifier or connect it to your existing ducting system to exhaust the smoke outside. The machine also offers an extension slider that increases the working area to 105 by 350 millimeters. The Rotary Roller RA Pro Max is compatible with other Sculptfun machines, so if you have multiple models, you should be able to share the same rotary tool. In terms of safety, the machine is fully enclosed and comes with a USB key for unlocking, along with an emergency stop button. Priced at $1,500, its features are comparable to similar machines on the market. I would like to thank Sculptfun for sending us this machine to review and for sponsoring today's video. Even though this is a sponsored video, we will offer an unbiased review and will not hesitate to point out any cons. With that said, let's get started. The machine comes in a retail box with the manual and accessories organized in separate layers. On top of the machine is a handle that makes it easy to lift the entire machine out of the box. In addition to the machine, the package includes ducting, a power supply, a USB cable, various tools and accessories, safety goggles, sample materials, and a user manual. Since the machine requires no assembly, you just need to plug in a few cables. Let's take a closer look at the back. First, a USB key must be inserted to operate the machine. Then connect the power supply and USB cable to your computer. For the ducting, install an adapter to exhaust smoke outside. Before turning on the machine, ensure that the emergency stop button is released. If you don't have their software installed, just go to the official website to download the latest version. Once the machine is on, the software will indicate that the machine is connected. Let's drag an image from the library for our first test. Okay, let's select this tiger head. Starting with the sample laser marking paper. The marking mode will be flat engraving. I'll keep the default settings and click the focus button to set the focal length. You can use the up and down arrow keys on the side of the machine to adjust the focal length. Move it down until the two dots overlap. Next, I'll draw a preview frame. Since this is an image file, the machine draws a rectangle. When I attempt to draw the outline in the software, it seems that this function doesn't work for images. It just tells you that the machine will scan the image line by line. To create an outline, we can convert the image to a vector and then use the fill mode. This time, it shows that all of the lines will be engraved, not exactly an outline, but more useful than scanning the image line by line as before. Now we'll click the mark button to start the job. The job finishes in 1 minute and 27 seconds. The result is good, and while the speed is decent, we can use line mode. Simply uncheck the fill box, and we're good to go. This time, it finishes in less than 5 seconds. Let's compare the results. With line mode, the job time is much faster, but depending on the type of result you're aiming for, line mode may not be suitable for every job. 
Next, I will engrave my logo. Since this is an SVG file, we don't need to make any adjustments. Just position it in the center, run a preview, and start the job. This time it took only three and a half seconds. Engraving on black coated paper is really fast, but this may not be the most common material we use in everyday scenarios. I would try the same thing on a 3D printed part. I often print lens caps like this, so I'll engrave the same logo on this black PLA part. As you can see, using the outline preview makes it difficult to align a round logo on a round object. It'd be better if the software allowed us to draw just the circle outline instead of showing everything that will be engraved. This is a limitation of the current software version, but there's a workaround. My logo is 65 by 65 millimeters, and both the X and Y positions are set to zero. To align it perfectly, I can temporarily remove the logo and draw a 65 by 65 millimeter circle for alignment. Set the X and Y positions to zero, and it'll be in the exact spot I need. Now, it's much easier to get perfect alignment. Then I'll use Ctrl Z to bring the logo back. Since we're engraving on plastic, the laser marking paper settings don't work. It looks like the material settings database in this beta software aren't fully complete yet. So I will increase the power to 100% and slow down the speed to 300 millimeters per second or 18,000 millimeters per minute. This job took a little over eight seconds, which is still pretty fast. The marks on the PLA part are clear, and the alignment is accurate. Even when zoomed in with a macro lens, the marks stay clear and permanent on the PLA surface. Next, I'll engrave on this black-coated aluminum business card. I will use the software's barcode tool to generate a QR code by typing in my website address and setting it to fill mode. Both the text and QR code will be engraved in fill mode. I'll use the same settings as for the PLA with 100% power and 300 millimeters per second speed. This job took 42 seconds to finish. While using fill mode scans the graphics line by line, which takes longer than line mode, 42 seconds is still reasonable. I scan the QR code with my phone and it works perfectly. By the way, my website layout has recently been updated, and I hope the price tracker will help users more easily find good deals. I remember seeing a picture of a golden retriever on the official website engraved on the same metal business card. I asked SculptFun to send me the image, and I'd like to try to replicate that result. I'll scale it down to fit the aluminum card. For power, I'll use 90%, and for speed, since engraving an image uses dotting time instead of speed per second, I will follow the reference table and set it to 200. It took about 1 minute and 28 seconds to finish, and the result looks great. The details are so clear it almost looks like a printed photo. It seems too good to be true, so I'll try engraving one of my own images, an unedited picture taken by an iPhone. Since this picture is wider, it took 3 minutes and 24 seconds to finish. As you can see, the result is still really impressive. Being able to engrave black and white pictures on this type of aluminum card is amazing. Next, I'll try engraving on leather. Both diode and IR lasers can engrave leather, so I'll test both of them for comparison. Let's start with a 10 watt diode laser. It took 11 seconds, and the result isn't bad. The text came out well with nice depth. The logo is decent, but not as good as the text. I'll run the same job again with the IR laser. It took about the same time to finish. I like how the IR laser just marks the surface without burning it. Comparing them side by side, the IR laser engraving looks more presentable. Now let's try some plywood. I will engrave the same picture and see how the 10 watt diode laser performs. The picture is slightly larger than on the aluminum card. It took longer. 
The job finished in 9 minutes and 52 seconds. I will also cut it up from the plywood sheet. Since this laser has no air assist, using higher power with low speed might result in dark edges. I will use 100% power, but increase the speed to 10 mm per second and run 4 passes. Each pass took around 30 seconds, so the job finished in 2 minutes. The result is not bad, it's in line with other diode lasers when engraving plywood. However, the cutting isn't as good as with traditional machines that have air assist. The edges are darker, and since the laser is fixed in the center, the cut is angled. Comparing this to the aluminum card, the IR laser on aluminum definitely looks better. Since the aluminum card is coated, the laser only needs to mark the coated surface. Now, I would try engraving on raw metal, starting with a stainless steel tag. The job finished in 1 minute and 8 seconds. The text is clear, and the engraving itself looks good, though I didn't center it perfectly. Next, I'll engrave a small piece of aluminum extrusion, similar to what you'd find on 3D printers and other machines. I will use the same settings as for the stainless steel tag, and the job finished in 2 minutes and 17 seconds. The marks are clear, though they'd be easier to see on camera with better lighting. Finally, I'll engrave a piece of raw 6061 aluminum stock for CNC machining using the same settings. Since the job is the same as the extrusion, it took the same amount of time to finish. Although the surface of the raw aluminum isn't smooth, the text looks okay. Next, I will test their rotary ruler, which is the same ruler used on other Sculpin machines. I will start with a small claw to engrave a tiny object, like a stainless steel ring. You need to set up the ruler in their software. Besides enabling the claw and ruler, you also need to input some parameters. I'm using their suggested values. You also need to measure the diameter of your object. In my case, the ring's diameter is 22 millimeters. This time, I don't want to just leave a light mark on the surface, so I'll slow it down to 5mm per second to create some depth. It's hard to see what's happening from a distance, so I'll switch to a macro lens for a close-up. At 5 mm per second, it took much longer to finish, 18 minutes and 20 seconds. The text is clear, and the marks are much darker than on the pet tag. When I run my finger over the surface, I can feel some depth. Since there's also a roller at the bottom, I'll use it to engrave a PETG pen holder. I printed several of these when testing 3D printers. I really like the golden retriever picture, so I'll engrave it onto the cylindrical object. I'll select roller mode, the pen holder has a diameter of 44 millimeters. I will use the same settings as the coated aluminum card, 90% power and 200 dotting time. This time, the job finished in 4 minutes and 18 seconds. While the uneven surface of the PTG pen holder doesn't look as good as the aluminum card, it's still pretty nice. The details of the picture are still visible on the 3D printed object. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this machine, starting with the pros. 1. The build quality of the hardware is top notch, so it's a premium quality machine. Two. The 2 watt dial laser can virtually mark any surface, including various metals and even 3D printed parts. 3. The picture engraving quality is stunning. I've tested other IR lasers before, and the G9's claimed accuracy of 0.0001mm is 2 to 10 times higher than that of other machines in the market. As a result, the Voto engraving is the best among all. 
4. It comes with its own PC software and a mobile app. I didn't try the mobile app because I found that using a mouse on a PC gives me better control in positioning objects. However, it's still nice to have an extra mobile app on hand that can connect to the machine wirelessly. Now for the cons. 1. This type of machine is not ideal for cutting, especially when working with wood. There is no air assist, and the laser is projected from the center, which means you can't achieve a straight cut unless you're cutting a tiny object placed at the center where the tilted angle is not that obvious. 2. The software is usable. I finished all the jobs in this video using only their PC software. However, the small details and features are just average. The Clipart library offers only a few selections, and the material parameter library doesn't work too well either. I often have to go back to the reference table to find the correct settings. 3. The outline preview feature is also not practical. Like the laser pecker software, it can only display vector graphics, but it shows the entire job instead of just the outline. With complex files like my logo, it becomes difficult to see. It would be better to show only the outline of the job, such as a simple circle, as that's all that's needed for alignment. In this matter, XTool software performs better. 4. The software does not display the estimated job time, making it difficult to know how long an engraving such as for the ring will take. Since this machine lacks a screen, it's important for the software to let the user know about the remaining time. In conclusion, I am satisfied with the build quality and engraving quality of this machine, especially for photo engraving. It's the best I've tested so far. If you work with jewelry, cards, tags, or other small objects, this machine is very handy. However, with a working area of just 105 by 105 millimeters, if you frequently work with larger items, you could get the extension kit for $200, but if you mainly work on wood, a more affordable traditional diode laser engraver would be a better option. As the first IR and diode dual laser machine from Sculptfun, it's inevitable that customers will compare it to existing competitors in the market. This machine is priced at $1,500, matching the Xtool F1 in price, and being $100 less expensive than the Laser Pecker LP4. All three machines offer premium build quality. The IR laser engraving on the G9 stands out, performing slightly better than its rivals. However, the cons are mainly related to the software. It's not a deal breaker as the software is still fully functional, but I do look forward to seeing improvements in future updates. If you are interested in the Sculptfun G9, I put the link under the description. Please also check out my price tracker at auroratechchannel.com, which monitors over 150 popular 3D printers, laser engravers, and CNC machines, with hourly updated prices and historical prices that help you easily spot great deals. That's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.